let's tell the tale of Rod Ferguson, destroyer of franchises. And we'll start with a beginning. Come on, you piece of junk. It's Hog, baby. Rod was born on June 1st, 1968 in Canada and in pure villain style. There's not much else about it. We don't know his parents. We don't know any, really anything except that he graduated from the University of Ottawa in 1990 with a degree in computer science. So he started his career as a technical support consultant for Microsoft for their customers using Microsoft Solutions Framework. It's kind of interesting to me that someone fresh out of college could land a consultant gig when the definition of a consultant is an expert, okay? Expert, just because you come out of school don't mean you're an expert at all. I went to school to be a technician, a mechanic in layman's terms, auto tech, and you think you know everything, but then when you get in the field, you find out real quick, you ain't an expert in shit, you know the basics. So that's kind of interesting to me that he's a consultant straight out of school, being an expert, but uh, that should be a pretty huge insight to what we're gonna see later on in his career timeline, later on in the video. I found this quote from Wikipedia pretty interesting. Uh, Ferguson grew up in Ontario, Canada, and while he had an interest in video games, he thought the industry was too far out of reach for him. Hmm. So the industry was too far out of reach, but you still found a way to come in without having any real applicable skills to bring to the table as far as game creation and game design go. None of the history of anything that I looked at for research in this video said anything about Rod being a badass game designer. We'll get into it later about what his skill set was, but that's a little foreshadowing. So shortly after this, a position opened up in Microsoft's internal simulations group, okay? And he landed a gig working on, drum roll please. Microsoft Train Simulator. So he did good on Microsoft Train Simulator. Got a good pat in the back, got a attaboy. It's kind of hard to fuck up a train game because you're literally just driving a train down a track and you hit stop and go. But details on that. In 2003, he was brought in to help assist setting the pace for bringing Counter-Strike to launch. So this is kind of where he... uh gets his name as being able to take a giant shit sandwich and, and at least put it together on a piece of bread and ship it. That's what he does. Um, he becomes known as a closer during this time period. So his ability to get projects thrown together and completed, um, the one thing that stood out to me was it never one time was anything delayed under his watch. It never dawned on him that, might be a good idea to delay something. We'll see that later on also. For two years after this, Rod did absolutely nothing noteworthy. It's There's a two-year gap. Wikipedia page says he worked on two unannounced game titles within Microsoft. He then decided to have a meeting with Microsoft and tell them that he needed to quit to go over to Epic and help them with the Gears of War franchise because it was in shambles and needed a closer. I don't know how much of this I believe. I always take everything with some skepticism, especially on Wikipedia, but it's about the only kind of source of information that we have that I could present to you. Um, I don't believe this. I think after two years of not producing anything, and maybe there was no games they could put him on to fix, Microsoft showed him the door. That's what I personally think, and I could be wrong. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. He moved on to Epic Games from Microsoft and became the executive producer brought in to get the game ready for release. Eventually, he would become director of production. This is where we see him first kind of get his feet wet for some leadership, and yet he's not head of the studio yet. That'll come real soon, but uh, no, no catastrophes to speak of just yet, but the stage is getting set. Things didn't last long, though, because our boy Rod didn't like the way things were going at Epic. Another project that was going on that Ferguson helped with was the mobile game series Infinity Blade. Uh, it was kind of conceived by a man named Donald Mustard of Epic's Chair Entertainment. And Ferguson had helped with the design, but he didn't understand mobile. 
which I don't find that really I find that really hard to believe. Uh, he didn't understand that and didn't understand on games focused on endless repetition of gameplay. Hmm. Okay. So around this time, this is 2012. Epic had discussions with Tenet Holdens as the company uh, wanted to get more into this mobile gameplay. And, you know, our boy Rod just didn't really like that. You know, he, he wants to be part of a huge uh, AAA studio that does big games with big impacts and uh, big storylines. That's that's what he likes. So, so he quit. He quits, goes to Irrational Studios. Irrational just to repronounce that so y'all can understand what I'm trying to say. Irrational, I-R-R-A-T-I-O-N-A-L, Irrational Studios. And he stays at Irrational for less than one year, seven months to be exact. And then he goes over to 2K slash Hangar 13, and he works on one of Hogg's loved franchises, Mafia. He works on Mafia 3. And if you've played any of the Mafia games, you know Mafia 1 was badass, you know Mafia 2 was badass, and guess what? You know, Mafia 3 sucked. It was pure certified woke trash that didn't make any damn sense whatsoever. Now, you can argue that he came in too late to affect anything or do anything like this, but he was known throughout the video game industry by this time as a closer that had to come in and make difficult decisions about development. So we keep that in the back of our mind about when we speculate, because a lot of this is speculation, we speculate about his role in Mafia 3. But Mafia 3 will also set the stage. There was a nasty game. It just killed the game. Game-breaking bug in the middle of the game to where you went to save your save game state, and it didn't save. And it didn't matter what you did. You went right back to that same. It was an autosave. You went right there. It's supposed to save so you could progress. If you died and didn't progress through there, you couldn't get past the game. Yours truly could not get past the game, and I ended up literally ripping the CD out of my drive and ninja starring it across the parking lot. Ninja star. It was in my semi at the time. Uh, I had an Xbox in my semi. I was playing it. I ninja started across the road and never saw it again. Okay, so he works at um, 2K for a really small, short time, like three months. Says he didn't get along with the upper management, so basically the big, big bosses. Um, above him he didn't get along with them and so he left so 2013 rolls around and rod gets word that microsoft is going to acquire epic so he calls him up says hey i really want to get involved this is really cool let me in let me in uh, let me in uh, microsoft please let me in uh. and they do it he immediately sets his sight on a successful franchise gears of war He's made the head of Black Tusk Studios, which is renamed to Coalition, and they're running Gears of War. So he sets his sights on Gears of War, and no, he doesn't decide to go make a brand new game. No, he remakes the game. A quick money grab remake that took 18 months of development. This further backs up my claim. I talk about Diablo 4 was not developed in 10 years. He was brought in. It was closed, 18 months, two years, thrown together, released, live service, developed as you go, okay? Remember this as we go on in this video, you're going to see it. You're going to go, God damn it. Every time I show it to you, you're going to get pissed, okay? Rod had a decision with Gears Ultimate. That's what we're talking about. Gears of War Ultimate. It's a remake. That's all it is. But he had a decision to make as the closer or the, actually, not. he's not the closer at this time. He's the head of the studio. He's the, the head cheese. Okay, and he had a decision. Use the dated Unreal Engine 3 or update entirely to Unreal Engine 4. What do you think he chose? Mm -hmm. True to Rod's develop on the fly style, he chose the former. Three, maintaining instant playability was their main goal. That's the philosophy that they have under Rod is maintaining instant playability. You see that with Diablo 4, while they do these instant patches. You need instant playability. So it's it's more like it's more like knee-jerk uh, development is what it is. It's knee-jerk reaction. It's reactive instead of proactive. 
A huge hint into Rod's studio philosophies are shown in this pretty interesting quote that I found on Wikipedia. As part of their always playable design philosophy, the team's budget for the project was set and maintained by monitoring real-world performance in the game, a.k.a. live service. So they put the game out, they monitor it, they react, they set the budget for what it's going to be, the demand's going to be, whatever it's going to be. It's such foreshadow and it's crazy. So basically what we saw in 2015 is what we're seeing right now. Take a franchise, remake it, get it out as quickly as possible, and then develop it based on the demands of the player base. Hmm. Let's move on to Gears of War 4. In typical Diablo 4 fashion, it gets rave reviews from the critics, but gets roasted by the community. And so what I did here is I looked at a combination of Reddit, and I went back and looked at comments on YouTube videos from this time period of the games that we're talking about. That's the best way that I can kind of quickly judge what folks are saying. And I'm talking about just a very small sample. I was alarmed at what I saw. Check out some of these quotes right here. Hmm, sound familiar? Let's look at Gears of War 5. Same stuff. Very common theme throughout the community was laggy, game crashes, memory leak, devs are out of touch, story don't make sense with the previous stories, it doesn't mesh, it doesn't continue, it went woke, we hear that a lot, uh, it sucks, the devs need to be fired, we, we see all that a lot, well, where are we hearing that now? Well, that's right. Hmm, what does all this have in common? Rod fucking Ferguson. He is the big cheese. This is his design philosophy, his development game philosophy, and we're living in it, and it's already been done. He literally goes around and kills these franchises. Let's not forget Gears Pop. Yeah. So our boy Rod, somewhere, somewhere around Gears of War 5, a little bit after, he had a, or maybe Gears of War 4, he had a little awakening that man i was wrong about mobile games you know before he left epic because they were doing mobile games he didn't want nothing to do with mobile games well he comes over here and makes a deal with funko pop now he don't want nothing to do with mobile games until it becomes big big green leafy spending money then he wants to get involved so they make gears pop micro transaction ridden hellhole equivalent to wwe champions sold the franchise out for a mobile microtransaction bullshit game just stupid game right explains why we saw lilith in call of duty now don't it mm -hmm. so let's talk about some other epic mentions that he was involved in in some way shape form or fashion okay i have to point these out because they're great how about vote the game yep what that is is a mobile game remember he quit epic because he didn't like mobile games mobile game about Obama boxing Mitt Romney encouraging people to vote can you keep your politics and shit out of my video games please I just want to play a video game I don't want politics if you're making a video game about politics in your career then you're going to inject your politics into mainstream games and we don't need that it's supposed to be neutral I don't want politics in my shit I hate politics so now he moves over to Blizzard to Diablo in 2020 February of 2020. So to me right there, that says this ain't 10 years of development. It's three years of development. If that, okay. They brought him on. He's known as the closer throughout the industry. Now we painted all this picture about everything that he's done, right? And everything that he's known for. Blizzard knew 
And this further solidifies, okay, you understand? This solidifies everything that I've been saying since July. I'm talking about Diablo Immortal, all of this shit that's happened. They come out with Diablo Immortal. The, the blowback was insane. Diablo Immortal was supposed to be the follow-up that everybody was going to love and play. Correct? Yes. They're like, oh shit, we messed up. Player base is pissed. They didn't expect to be booed on stage at BlizzCon. So they go into emergency mode, just like I said before. And they rush, throw together Diablo 4. And who do they hire to do it? Rod Ferguson. They know that he's awesome at throwing together some shit because he's done it before. He has a huge track record of doing it. Throwing together some stuff and getting it put out. One of the developers, it's not, uh, it's the other Joe. Bigger Joe, not Joe Shelley. He let it slip. They were still using the Hydra platform, which is their proprietary, you know, like Unreal Engine, it's their proprietary engine. They're still using it. Same thing they're using Diablo 3. Hydra. So what does that tell you? Look at the memory leak and all the shit we had. What does that tell you? That tells me, based on what they did Gears of War Ultimate, is they came in Diablo 3, they reskinned it, just like D2R. So if you look at D2R, they took the base game of Diablo 2, they laid an overlay over it and made some design changes. Little, you know, little design changes with the items and stuff, but it's an overlay that runs on top of the old game. And you know this because you can toggle it with a button. Okay. So that explains they did they took Diablo 3. They modernized the art. They added some systems. That's why everything's so damn glitchy because it's running on top of an old ass engine. That's why they had a huge memory leak. That's why they're limited to still four player parties in 2023, 2024 now. That's why we're seeing all the issues, the random crashes, the super high performance computers can't handle it. I had multiple guys on launch that ran, you know, overclocked CPUs and all. They had to reset to default settings to get the game to stop crashing. So now it all makes sense. Come in, blast the game out, tell everybody Diablo 3 had 10 years of development. It's okay. We're, you know, we're going to continue to do it. They did their philosophy of develop on the fly, get the game playable and develop on the fly. And that's what they're doing. And they're got, they've got the, the microtransactions going. They've got the battle pass going. The game is profitable. See, because here's the cold, hard reality. Company don't give a shit. If you cry about a game, they don't care. They don't care if I cry. They don't care if anybody talks about it. They don't care. It's all about money. It's all about bottom line. The game's making money. And the game's retaining players. Doesn't matter. They're going to do whatever they want to do. It's just like uh, big sporting goods. Y'all remember when they took their guns out? Everybody said it was going to go out of business and Dix was going to die and all this. Didn't happen. You know why? Because they took where their guns were, they put apparel there, clothes, Nike, Adidas, sold twice as much, took that real estate, put that there. That's why they don't care if players like you and me bitch, because we'll leave and they'll just bring players and never play before in. That's their philosophy. The only way it's going to get better is if he gets fired, okay, and we stop playing it. That's the only thing that's going to show them if we massively don't log in for a new season or for whatever little silly thing they bring out, we don't log in, then they'll get the picture, but they ain't going to. And here's what's even scarier. The new boss of Blizzard, she's going to just full throttle this shit they're doing all the way because she loves it. If it makes her money and it makes Rod money and it makes the company money, they don't care. They don't give a shit. But yeah, Rod Ferguson, in my opinion, he's the destroyer of franchises. He's a villain, and uh, nothing's going to get fixed until he goes. Appreciate y'all watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Join my Discord. Link's down there. I'm always live on Twitch, too, if you want to check out my stream. See y'all next time.